Good morning and welcome to Morning Movie News. Today's installment is all about ridiculous movie news. The first story is that they finally uh, revealed the official title of Transformers 4, and it's Transformers 4 Age of Extinction. And they also revealed the first poster, which is basically the logo that we've already been seeing, but it's in the sand, with the sand blowing away and revealing the logo. And everyone went, it's like an archaeological dig. Where's that connection come from? Well, everybody's very excited about the semi-rumors, semi-already-confirmed fact that Dinobots will be joining the franchise for this fourth installment. And that's why this goes in today's ridiculous news segment. Because uh, I can't decide if Dinobots are a stroke of brilliance or, uh, you know, jumping the shark or nuking the fridge for this franchise. I guess Mark Wahlberg, for him, it might make a little bit of sense because he already found tremendous success uh, with Ted. Uh, who would have guessed that Mark Wahlberg and a teddy, you know, a potty mouth teddy bear who smokes uh, marijuana would have been a huge hit? Although I guess that actually was a pretty safe bet uh, considering Seth MacFarlane's track record. But I just feel that Dinobots might be a really hard sell to non-hardcore Transformers fans. Especially because when I was researching this, I discovered that there's a very good chance that the Transformers are going to ride the Dinobots. And I think like robots riding robots might just be a little too apocalyptic crazy uh, for your mainstream moviegoer to accept. And also, how big would the Dinobot have to be for, uh, you know, I think its name is Grimlock, for um, Optimus Prime to ride it? I mean, and also Optimus Prime would be so high off the ground at that point that how would any human be able to talk to him? I don't know, it just seems very clunky and awkward. Uh, I just, I don't know. That, that, to be fair, though, I have never seen the Dinobots in action. I'm not a Transformers fan. I've seen all the films, but I've never really watched uh, any of the animated series versions or something or stuff like that or, uh, you know, played with the toys. So I, I, I have to admit, Dinobots are foreign to me, so maybe I'm missing the awesome angle here. And, you know, Steven Spielberg produces the Transformers films, so I guess he was like, what if we combined Transformers and Jurassic Park, huh? I mean, that's a pretty good pitch in the room, but I think that when you start to visualize it, uh, you really might be like, I think you might be going too far here. But we'll see. Uh, what do you guys think? I'm interested to know if you're a Transformers hardcore fan. Are you super excited about Dinobots? And if you're not a hardcore Transformers fan, do you think that, you know, considering this franchise is already on the edge of ridiculousness already, can you really support uh, you know, this, this kind of development. Can you get behind it? So that's the first ridiculous news story of the day. The second ridiculous news story of the day, some of you already asked me to comment on this, is that Justin Timberlake was on a radio show, uh, you know, talking about the VMAs and also promoting his upcoming film, Runner Runner, where he co-stars with Batman. That's right, Ben Affleck. So they were asking him, and obviously Justin Timberlake was very gracious, and he supported Ben Affleck and said, I think he'll be great. And they said, no, JT, would you want to be Robin? And of course, he was like, no, I don't want to be Robin. I don't want to play any superhero. I want to be a villain. And then he kind of semi-jokingly, semi-seriously floated out the idea that he'd like to be the Riddler. And I say, not only is that a ridiculous idea, but it's kind of ridiculous that the casting of Ben Affleck as Batman has opened the door to these kinds of other suggestions and making them maybe not so ridiculous. Because I think that before Ben Affleck was cast, this would just be a huge joke if Justin Timberlake said he wanted to be in a DC comic book movie. But now you might think, well, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's one Warner Brothers executive who's like, well, now wait a minute, the, the kids do like JT. So I, I just, I don't know. I think it's, I think it's crazy that he would even float that idea. Um, I think it's scary that Warner Brothers might consider it. And I, I just get nervous about this kind of stunt casting. There was also, I'll put a link to it below in the video description, but there was also a leak uh, of a possible design for Ben Affleck's Batman costume over on Bleeding Cool this morning. And I got really nervous when I saw it because they brought back the yellow uh, utility belt and the yellow, uh, you know, bat chest plate symbol. And uh, also they made the ears shorter. It's a very weird look. It was very utilitarian and I think it really took a lot of the cool factor out of it and made me worry about maybe going back to the camp aspects. Now there was a note written on it that said Ben won't, Ben says no to, to bat nipples and as the, um, the guy writing the article pointed out is Ben Affleck the only thing standing in the way between bat nipples on this costume and not having bat nipples on this costume. Uh, you wouldn't think that Ben Affleck would have to make a demand like that. But uh, I put a link, so I put a link below to where you can f take a look at that costume. And uh, I don't know, I get, I, I, it's getting a little too, too close to Joel Schumacher for my liking, and I'm just getting very nervous. Okay, so that, that's, the, uh, that's the ridiculous news story there. 
third ridiculous news story of the day uh, is this crazy rumor that Benedict Cumberbatch is going to be in the Star, uh, Star Wars as a villain. Uh, it's, it's like this new trend, and it's going to be actually the, the so let's kind of mix this in with the uh, question of the day, actually, because they're on the same, uh, the same topic, basically. And it's from Gloria Palace, who at, yesterday asked me to talk about the fact uh, that there were rumors that Simon Pegg was going to be Ant-Man. And basically, the Simon Pegg and Benedict Cumberbatch rumors are coming from these really small uh, fringe movie news websites that are basically just trying to get hits. It's kind of like uh, the National Enquirer of movie news. Uh, kind of syndrome, and it's kind of sad and uh, and dangerous uh, that these things, these stories, are getting traction. That they're working. I mean, this is not discouraging these smaller sites from making up these stories at all because it gets tremendous news coverage. You even have major publications uh, covering these stories, even if it's just to debunk them. Which the Benedict Cumberbatch one was debunked yesterday when finally some people reached out to his representatives and they said, "Is Benedict Cumberbatch signed on for Star Wars?" And they're like, "No, he's not." Now. As and this site could say, the site who originally published the story, they could always go, that's what they're saying. That's just the official word. And so you kind of like have this, you know, uh, syndrome where, you know, it's never end, it never ends. And I think it's, it's bad. And I think that is, um, you know, the fan base has to stop giving legitimacy and attention to these stories because they're only going to create more of them. And we're going to create a scenario where you can't tell where a real, what a real news story is. And I think it's fine to hypothesize. I think the site would have been better off saying, wouldn't it be great if Benedict Cumberbatch was cast in the Star Wars film? I think that would have been a much better idea instead of trying to create this conspiracy theory that it's a hidden fact, that just they haven't released it yet, because they, they basically the story for Cumberbatch came off of the idea that he dropped out of the Del Toro Crimson Peak film. So they were like, why would he do that? I know, he's going to be in Star Wars. And then the Simon Pegg one came from the fact that he was visiting the Marvel headquarters, which, by the way, I used to work at Marvel, and they have celebrities come in there all the time, and none of them usually are working on a Marvel project. People just like, these people like, celebrities like comics too, and when they come to Mar uh, New York City, they want to get a tour, and Marvel's very receptive to that, very open. So they're bringing people through all the time because it helps them as well because they take a picture of the celebrity in their office uh, holding a bunch of comics like they did with Benedict Cumberbatch, by the way, as well. And then they float it on the Internet and makes everybody happy and gets free publicity for Marvel. So everybody wins and the celebrity gets to go to Marvel headquarters and get a bunch of free comics. So anyway, they took a, a picture of Simon Pegg and he pointed to Ant-Man in one of the many murals they have in the office there. And everyone was like, he's giving us a sign. And Simon Pegg was like, I'm just excited for Edgar Wright, and then that's the character, so I'm showing support. Uh, and so, I, I, again, like I wouldn't read too much into that kind of thing. Uh, and I think it's nice that Simon Pegg gave support. I think he would be a horrible choice for Ant-Man. I think that uh, as much as I love Simon Pegg, I, I don't know if he can carry, especially you know, especially based on how the World's End is doing. Uh, Eugenio Derbez should be Ant-Man before Simon Pegg because Eugenio Derbez makes, you know, has a bigger draw at the U.S. box office than Simon Pegg. They really need someone who can carry a film, because Ant-Man is going to be a tough sell, Edgar Wright is a tough sell, so they need someone who's not a tough sell to join that film. Uh, as for Benedict Cumberbatch, you know, I was thinking about it, and I was like, oh, it's too bad that Benedict Cumberbatch was in Star Trek, because he probably would be a pretty good Star Wars villain, and, you know, he wasn't such a great Star Trek villain, in my opinion, uh, and so uh, it's, it sucks that that's what he ended up with. But, you know what, if he wasn't a Star Wars film, he would just... It would just be Benedict Cumberbatch in a Star Wars film. And they had a quote from him, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, talking about Star Wars and what a big fan he was. And he said, when I was growing up, I wanted to be uh, Han Solo. And I thought, oh, isn't that nice? Uh, and I thought, you know, a lot of kids, you know, growing up wanted to be mostly Han Solo. Um, you know, even the girls. Han Solo was so cool, everyone wanted to just be the female version of Han Solo. Uh, but Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker, all cool characters. Uh, and I think it's because they were mostly unknown actors. I mean, Carrie Fisher, I think, was the best known of the group, uh, no, known member of the group. More nepotism, by the way, being Debbie Reynolds and um, Eddie Fisher's daughter, just like Dakota Johnson just was cast in Fifty Shades of Grey. This is so frustrating. Uh, so apparently, if you want to be an actress, you have to be the daughter of someone. It's very annoying. But I do think that for Star Wars, J.J. Abrams should go with unknowns. Not even TV actors. Hardcore unknowns. And then, because I think the real star is the Star Wars franchise. And of course, the return of Harrison Ford, um, Carrie Fisher, and Mark Hamill. 
that's what everyone's going to be really looking forward to. And let's build some new stars who, you know, I mean, there are a lot of talented actors out there who aren't related to anyone who deserve a shot. And I think it would be really exciting to, to see them come into the mythos. Also, you know, they did a good job with the original, with the, with the, not the original, with the prequels, adding a little bit of diversity. But it would be great to add some more diversity uh, to these other film, to these new films, both in terms of uh, race, but also gender. I would really love to see a female character who is not an ambassador, diplomat, damsel in distress, slash kick ass when she needs to be. Uh, I would love to see there. And you know what? The um, well, I watched it only for a brief time, but the Clone Wars animated series did a great job with that. They had some really cool female villains. Anakin Skywalker's apprentice was a female alien, and she was cool. Uh, they did a pretty pretty good job. I think, actually, diversity wasn't so well handled there either, but it's still, it's a step in the right direction. So I'm very excited for this new Star Wars film, and I hope that J.J. casts some unknowns. What do you think? What do you think of today's ridiculous news stories? Not so ridiculous, in your opinion, or crazy ridiculous? Write your thoughts down below, as, long, as well as any uh, stories you'd like to see covered tomorrow and any questions you might have. Thanks for watching. Bye.